how to get rid of tennis elbow this is possibly the most requested video topic that I've received over the past three years since I started my YouTube channel and the reason why I have made this video is because I really don't like giving medical advice since I'm obviously not a doctor so the first thing that I want you to do if you have elbow pain is go see your doctor but having said that I've been teaching tennis for the last 30 years and many of my students are at the recreational level and of course many of them have had elbow problems so I can give you some anecdotal evidence on how you can prevent tennis elbow so one possible cause of tennis elbow is your technique and interestingly I find that the one-handed backhand executed incorrectly will give players a lot of trouble with their elbow so if you are hitting a backhand obviously all the impact on your arm is going to be on the outside of the arm see the forehand and the serve is protected when it comes to tennis elbow of course you can get pain in the elbow on this side on the forehand and the serve as well but most commonly players experience pain on the outside of the arm when striking a one-handed backhand or a backhand volley or a slice backhand it is of course less frequent with a two-handed backhand however most of the recreational players on the male side will use a one-handed backhand this is where I see a lot of problems so it's of the utmost importance that you learn the proper one-handed backhand technique if you're more interested in finding out what that is check out my lesson with Shamir one of the most popular videos on my channel where I teach Shamir the proper one-handed backhand but generally speaking whichever shot you're executing with improper technique that's lacking the fundamentals it's usually going to result in a shot where the arm is used in isolation where the body is not helping the arm or what happens then the arm gets worked over time and this can cause pain in different parts of the arm it can be in your wrist it can be in your shoulder but it is very often on the outside of the elbow I have seen some players also with golfers elbow in tennis and if you execute the proper fundamentals on all your strokes and also use your body to accommodate the arm this can make it easier to hit the ball it's going to result in a more effortless swing and can therefore be easier on your arm so the second way you can get problems with your elbow is if you have a grip size that's either too small or too big so if the grip size is too big you're going to have to hold the racket a little bit tighter because the fingers are not going around the racket usually there's going to be a gap between the palm of your hand and your finger so if you place your finger in that gap if there's too much room your grip size is too big and therefore when you're hitting all your shots you're going to be gripping the racket a little bit too tight and this can cause pain but it's interestingly also if the grip size is too small if you ever pick up a kid's racket and try to play with it and if your hand is completely overlapping the grip and it's the fingers are over your palm this can also uh, cause some pain so the best way to check for the proper grip size is if you are holding the racket and you stick your non-dominant hands index finger in this gap and if it's snugly fitting in here that is the correct grip size now the next thing is a super complicated thing to explain but I'm going to do my best job to explain it so it makes sense to you guys so obviously if you play with the wrong racket this can cause pain in the arm but since we all have different bodies we're going to be able to play with different rackets so somebody for example that's a very strong might be able to play with a racket that's very heavy and this might not have any effect on this type of player's arm but someone that's maybe a little bit weaker who doesn't have as much strength maybe an elderly player is going to have a really hard time with a heavy racket and, and those type of players are going to be better off playing with a lighter racket when it comes to racket stiffness this is where it gets really complex because a stiff racket that's also light this might be a good choice for some players who are not very strong for example elderly players and this is exactly how these rackets are made usually they are oversized rackets with a bigger head size they're very light usually around 260 270 grams and they're also very stiff so in other words that type of racket is going to be very responsive it's not going to require a lot of strength to swing the racket on the other hand there's going to be some stiff rackets that are more for the advanced level and these might be a little bit more difficult to play with if you are a recreational player so you have to be careful if you play with a Babolat racket for example the pure drive 
for the Aero. This is a racket that a lot of juniors use. This is a racket that a lot of professional players use, but I have seen some players at the recreational level struggle with these type of rackets, especially if they're strung tight. So you have to take different factors into consideration when you're talking about a stiff racket and make sure that you're looking at the racket's weight, make sure that you're looking at the racket's head size uh, before deciding whether you should play with it or not. Interestingly, if you get a softer frame, a very flexible frame, this is often marketed as a racket that's good for the arm, but I have seen a lot of players struggle with these type of rackets as well, as well and get tennis elbow as a result of it. So there you have to be careful as well. Usually if you play with a racket that's softer, it's gonna be less responsive. You're gonna have to swing a lot harder at the ball and this might be tough on the arm. However, there's a lot of players, even at the recreational level, who are very comfortable playing with a softer frame, such as uh, the Wilson Blade, for example. These are uh, softer rackets, they're more flexible, and players are usually quite comfortable with those rackets as well. So it gets really complex when we're talking about rackets. The best thing that you can do is test different rackets out and see how your arm uh, responds to them. And now let's get to the number one culprit when it comes to pain in your elbow and that is the way the rackets are strung so let me get something real quick i'll be right back all right guys so here's what happens when you send your racket over to get strung and this only applies to polyester strings which happens to be the most popular string even at the recreational level so this does not apply to synthetic gut or natural gut this only applies to polyester so we're here over string spring from a pen if i pull on the string lightly you can see it snaps back in place, right? So this is the same way the strings are gonna behave if they're strung properly. However, what happens with most string jobs is that the strings get overstretched. And you can see here that this spring does not snap back in place. This is exactly what's happening to your strings when they get strung too tight or when they get overstretched. The string is therefore dead. It will play dead. You will not get enough power and this is the major cause for tennis elbow all across the globe. So the best thing you can do to prevent tennis elbow or if you already have it to make it go away is start stringing your rackets looser. Do not string the racket over 52 pounds if you have regular polyester string. If you play more with a professional grade polyester, the copolymers, I would even go below 45 pounds. Do not be afraid. The racket is not gonna be too loose. Personally, I string my rackets at 36 pounds. If I'm playing a match, I might string it a little bit tighter. At 40, and I play with a monofilament polyester string, which is a little bit more old school. If you're more interested in finding out what type of polyester strings exist on the market, check out my video titled, My String Guide. Now, when you walk into the pro shop to get your racket strung, you're gonna have to be brave when you tell them to string it at 35 pounds, because I guarantee you they're gonna come back at you saying it's gonna be too loose. But the best thing you can do is try it out. I can tell you that these type of strings perform really well when they're strung loosely. So the best thing you can do is give it a shot. So guys, the first thing you gotta do when you have pain in your elbow is consult with your doctor. There's certain remedies that they're gonna prescribe. Maybe you're gonna take some medications. Maybe you're gonna get a bandage for your arm. All these things are very helpful, but it doesn't hurt to try some of the things that I suggested in this video. Make sure that you work hard on your technique so it's fundamentally sound. Make sure you're playing with the correct grip size. Make sure the racket feels comfortable. You're not playing with a racket that's wrong for you. And most importantly, don't be afraid to play with polyester strings. These strings are okay, but only if they're strung correctly. Do not be afraid to string your racket loosely. And I know my evidence is anecdotal, but many of the students that I teach in person have received the same recommendations that I just gave to you. And these players were able to get rid of their pain. So in addition to doing everything you need to do to get rid of your arm pain that's prescribed by your doctor, give some of these things a try and hopefully you'll get to play tennis pain-free.